So, hello, hello, hello. So, my name is Christian. Um, I'm the owner of a digital marketing agency called Cap2. We do a lot of other things in the farm as well. Um, I'm doing this now for, started the company in 2017. So in the last six years, we went from me and a colleague of mine uh, to about 100 of us. And we mostly do pharma, and there so far we've done about 400 different projects. I know that sounds surreal to me too, but when I look at the invoices, that's what it says. We've done <laughs> we send a lot of invoices. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, our our projects can start as simple as uh, you know they give us a PowerPoint presentation and they say make it nice. So we have uh, uh, excellent designers who don't worry about that. Then uh, projects are. Traditional projects are where we create landing pages or HTTP portals. We've done a lot, lot of different HTTP portals for lots of different therapeutic areas, um, also for patients. Then lately, we've doing a lot of work for Viva, from the whole approval process, but also um, web, web enabled emails and the whole um, sales of marketing cloud. In the area, we have also for experts. Then what else are we doing? Um, uh, we do a lot of virtual reality applications at the moment. That seems to be the, the new thing next to AI. Um, and different way how to present information to the patient or the, to the HTTP. We have a solution here, we can show them later, as, a, as an innovative strategy to better engage or engage differently with the HTTP. Um, we created a, what we call Scrabble, which is a customer HTTP experience platform um, where we constantly measure analyze and improve engagement with HTTP and also with patients. So, of course, we do MPS uh, surveys, we do CSAT surveys, we, we then compare results between different therapeutic areas, but also different regions and countries and the whole world, in order then to, uh, to improve uh, what, what uh, the pharma companies are doing. So that's the solution, our own solution called Screver. Uh, of course, we do worry about um, um, Pharmacovigilance in there too, so adverse events, we, it's also handling there. Yeah, and then what else? Ah, yes, we do a lot of movies. So movies is also the next big thing, you know, where uh, it's a really good and easy and cheap way to interact or to interact with the HCP and the patient and to, to explain treatment, medication, procedures. So, in a nutshell, we are a digital marketing agency and we do all these things. So, I've been now asked to to talk about uh, innovative ways to how to today to engage with um, HCPs. And since I had 20 minutes now, 60 minutes to, to do this, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very challenging in 20 minutes. Now we have a few more minutes time. But I want to, from, from these 400 projects, I, in the six years of experience, uh, I want to give you a few, you cannot call them low hanging fruits, but few ideas on, on how, if I were now a pharma company, if I would, what, what I would do uh, for the HCPs. So, and um, where, we are, where we are very successful working together with you is where we, where we at, at the beginning of a project, a lot of time it's not very clear what the customer really wants. And in order to better understand what the, the, the customer wants from us as a marketing agency, we, we survey them, we survey we do uh, like requirements and anal analytics. We do we write it down basically, but mostly what we, we then do an ideation workshop, an ideation workshop where we gather people from different uh, domains within the pharma company into a for a workshop where we then think what what it is what the HCP really wants, not what you marketeer think he needs, so, but what what uh, what really keeps him awake at night, and. Why I'm saying this, this is a really important topic in order to find out how to engage anyway, but we quite often include the physician already in that process. You know, you always, your relationship with your KOLs and, and other physicians, you know, you would be surprised how many would be ready and willing to, to join a workshop because it, 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 it's simple. Then, then we, we, we shorten the process and we actually then develop something that the HGP needs needs versus what, what, what we think he wants or he must have. So, so the ideation uh, workshops, this, this is a, a really good uh, method on, on, on how to kickstart any kind of uh, innovation. Then we are, we, are, we are very fond of what we call HCP experience maps. 
That is, we together again in the workshop, there's no AI, there's no fancy things. We really put our thinking hats on and we, we think about or we, we, we write down and we design a, a chart that shows then that all the current touch points you're using to engage with your customer. Once we've done that, or po also per product, per therapeutic uh, area, once we've done that, we are trying to find out on which touch points you want to excel. It will be better than the competition where you have a USP. And once we have that, we try to, we are, we, we are going to identify the gaps. How good are you today, um, objectively? And how good could you be in the future? And then we, t we, we, we take a, a set of measurements and actions, and then we start improving on those signature touch points, and we always keep asking the physicians, the user, the user, if we are on the right track. And if you do that, you're continu continuously improving what you're doing. So and now we have the as is on this uh, customer experience map, and then the next job is then to sit together and then identify future touch points. What are new touch points? And there, at the moment, we talk about 50 different touch points that could be valuable. The, we don't need to do all of them, but we need to test. We need at, least, at, least, at least we need to discuss if a touch point makes sense or not. I was just before on a panel, I'm not sure where you were there, but I talked about, I don't know why people are laughing, but a, a, a Tinder application, a, a Tinder ads we've done in, we run in the Scandinavia. And that was a, a HPV awareness campaign. And if you look at this, at the cohorts for HPV, there are some, some one of the cohorts are, are young females, and they seem to be on Tinder, and uh, and that actually converted extremely well, and that's something that came out of an ideation workshop. So now we've done the ideation workshop, we have a custom experience map, and then um, we can talk about um, innovative ways in the sense of. Um, Maybe then, if you pull up that VR application, that's probably sim more simple to uh, explain. So we created this VR application. We thought about how we can we can create the landing page for the physician. We can create the HP portal. They're quite stale and they're not so innovative. They're not going there and, and reading reading all the new stuff, and they're, all not, they're also not reading your newsletter. Some of them do. We tested this. Some of them don't, depending how it's designed. But when we, every time we come with a VR application as a new approach for the pharma, t pharma marketeers and sales to engage with the customers, that resonates very, very well and com converts very well. And to in a nutshell, what we have here is basically all the skills and all the services in our companies are in there because um, we have all the, uh, let, how we do this, let's go to, for instance, um, to a PDF there. So here you could have any kind of study as a PDF, of course, or any kind of procedure or medication or therapy, uh, any kind of information you want the HTTP to know in, in a, that's probably going to be a very big one, uh, in, in this VR application. It's probably a fifth, okay, it's, it's one of our brochures. So if you close this again there, then if you click on, on, on up here, yeah, click on it, um, this is a movie. So as I said before, we're creating dozens and dozens of movies every year uh, for multiple purposes. So you could also run movies also within this uh, application. This movie quickly shows how Cap2, our company, is curing pharma marketeers' headaches and helping them doing um, projects. So now we have any kind of document you can put into such a VR application. Uh, we have movies in there. Then I guess here, there's another movie on top about our oncology compass. Um, yeah, this is a newsletter we are, we are providing for oncologists that we're writing ourselves. So of course you can, you can send the newsletters the, the traditional way, but you can also link them to this VR application. What else is there then? Ah, yes. So I'm not sure, maybe you're familiar with Framingham. We also, we also summarizing hundreds of studies a year where 
We are, so a physician doesn't need to read the whole 50, 100 page document, but we summarize it and redesign the graphs. And, 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 and we, we have six or seven medical writers, and we write the, the text of that study in a way that the physician really understands, and not just the statistician. So that's it, it's these, these things you can also provide in here. And then we have our uh, real-time feedback option. If you turn around. If you then walk around, it's really cool when you look at it with the goggles. This is our, our, our feedback solution, Scriber, that I said before, where we measure the MPS and the CSAT, CSAT and any kind of questions. It's also integrated in this VR world. So we have, you have, we have one integrated platform where you can present lots of different material and movies and also get immediate feedback. And then it's a really cool thing also what, 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 what companies should do if you go on the, on the patient then. So if you click on the patient, we are not, we, we, that's now an MEP version, but we are, we've done for Bayer, we, for Xeralta, which is a, uh, a drug that prevents from brain hemorrhage. Um, it's, really, uh, it's really difficult to transport the, 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 uh, the information, the messages to the patients. So we created there an app and a 3D model of the organ and showed the potential p the patient what could happen and what, what that he's becoming aware of the symptoms and he can react before it's too late. And in here you can imagine that we will also have any kind of 3D modeling like we did in here where we can present any kind of human or doctor or even organs. Did I miss anything there? Of course, yes. Of course, you can link to any kind of external contents in there too. This is now going to this. I think this is our website. Yeah. So that's one for us. We think is quite an innovative strategy on how to better engage with the customer. Do you have anything, any examples, as well? Do you, are, are you doing VR? Anyone? No. You're working with movies, to exp uh, with explainer movies, could be cartoon, could be humans, where explain. For, can you give us an, an example? Sometimes to, to explain the mode of action of a, of a pharmaceutical or how the, how the handling is of the uh, product. Yeah. And does it convert? So I think the. Uh, fancy <laughs> here, but not for everybody it, it needed. No, of course not. No, no, of course not. But the younger physicians, they, they, yeah. they, they, they like, of course, we see the different conversion in the different age groups as well, also different countries in the, yeah, in the more mature markets that, that, that works quite well. But we, we also, I, I recently now have my own gynecologist. <laughs> no, uh, we, we're working with gynecologists together and with that special practice of guide coaches it's that's in Switzerland. There we are we are want to and what the what the physicians don't have is time. So we need to really to worry about the thing about how can we save time? How can you help them uh, when 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 we survey the physicians they, they want to treat the better the patients better, but they don't have the time. So we need to start digitizing some of the of, of the processes. And she came to us and that was very interesting. She said I want to know how my patient feels today before he enters the practice or the room. She, and now what we've done is, it just when we went live last month with this, a patient, a female patient comes in and usually they have to wait with the doctors. She has an iPad in her hand and, and, and with on that iPad we're asking her for our Scrabble software a few questions. How she's feeling today, is she in pain, also if, if, she, if she's in a rush. Because if she's in a rush, then the doctor knows, okay, I have to be very fast, and how I explain my, I give her my information. If she says, I have really time, I really want to know, then the doctor knows she has more time to do this. So, and now we've done this now for a month, and the patients are really happy. 
because the, the doctor knows now, when before the patient comes from the Wartezimmer, from the waiting room, uh, she knows how this person feels. And then, depending on how long the session or the, the yeah, the, let's say the session goes, the the patient then at, at the exit receives another quick survey, or then later, an hour later, automated from our system. To, and we are asking, hey, did we fulfill your expectation today or not? And why not? What can we do better? This is very simple. This is not AI. This is just um, asking the patient. Uh, how they feel and what they really want, and so the doctors they can improve what they're doing. So, does anyone else have uh, really good innovative ways to engage with customers? Something with the HCPs? What is the mo the most state of the art thing you do in your company? Landing page, social media strategy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so not much, I guess you need a good agent to do this. I'll give you another example. So I said this before when I was on the panel. You know, we, when, when, when we are approached by farmers to do some kind of project, it's always tomorrow. It took them ages to find out that they have to do a project and then it has to be finished in, in a week. So therefore, we always got an approach, we always get the, the main stakeholders in, on board with the, when we have kickoff meeting. That includes medical advisor, that inc includes medical legal. So we can kind of preempt what's going to happen later. And in one case where we, we, we ran a global, a global campaign, we, had to, we created 3,500 assets. And an asset could be a, a movie, explanation movie, could be a landing page, could be a social media campaign or a visual. We created 3,500 assets and got them approved within eight weeks. So we created uh, about 20 assets on a global level and then we localized them. And so we then come to 3,500 assets in multiple languages. So that's another thing where that, uh, that a learning from for us that we miserably failed at the beginning, that to really include uh, the ones who could stall the process. I hope no one is a, a medical advisor, or medical legal here, but who could stall, not on purpose, who could solve the whole process? We have a uh, uh, we have a member from MSD, Merkel Sharp, Sharp and Dome here. What is your most innovative way of engaging with an HCP? Well, I would say de definitely is the new is a buzzword, right? It's omni-channel. So when you try to do something in, in different channel and you orchestrate it, um, and in terms of. Uh, um, Innovative, I would say, no innovation in our case is to engage the, the HCP um, uh, in a, in a, in a uh, dialogue, right? So I think most innovative, and it's also I'm doing a bit of uh, a PR for you, is the Oncology Compass, right? Because that, that is very innovative. You not only uh, do some kind of a push message, this is our product, uh, uh, this is why you should use it, but with, uh, with the oncologists, we de delivered the study summary service. So they, they want study <coughs> summary, so they get that from us um, and can then uh, better take their decisions. So we involve in the decision making, right? Without being too much pharma, because that's the next thing that we should not be, right? So uh, I think that was a very innovative uh, approach. Um, not only because you were there as an agency, but because we really changed the way we, we, we started the project. Where, which was ask the customer, and I'm sure you have your your stories as well, because we didn't start like that. We started in our office with some idea, which failed visibly, and then we asked, and then uh, that, that came up. So yeah, I hope that gives you some input. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, yeah in that case, <coughs> that's now three and a half years ago, I ran an ideation workshop with MSD, and Michael was also present in there. The idea was how to better engage with the, with the HCP. How can we really create value for them? And uh, the result was then that we said, okay, we can do, we can do multiple things, but we, we, we then shortlisted three of them. We started to ideate, MVP them. And we had this amazing idea that we sh were sure that's the best idea pharma market has ever invented. We, we called it case box. And the case box was uh, a physician, uh, an oncologist, would upload a patient case onto our platform, case box. And other physicians, like on Facebook, could follow them. And whenever he changes treatments, or he, she, sorry, he, she, she changes treatments, the other physicians would get informed. So they can also change if they feel fit. That was a super idea. And then we said, okay, why, why we do that? And we have an uh, Ask the Expert 
uh, functionality where, an on where a GP or a specialist doctor or an oncologist can ask a question and the leading experts, the KOL, they answer in due time. So we were so sure this is the best thing ever. We, and then, it, thanks God, we are not as stupid in designing, developing the whole thing, uh, and, and then to find out a million later that it's not working. So we, we MVP'd the whole thing. We created the, what we call a clickable prototype, and then we went to the physician, the oncologist. And we showed it to them, very proud, 12 of those, and they all said, it's really cool, I would use it exactly once and never again. So the whole idea was down the toilet. That was really bad for us, for our egos. But then we asked them why. Why? And they said, I myself am a good oncologist. I'm an expert. I don't need to follow others. I don't, I don't need to ask others. Uh, how do we deal with this? And then I was at least smart enough to ask them, okay, what is it then? What else do you need that the farmers at the moment don't provide to you? And they said, what we need is a, a one-stop shop where I find all practice changing and practice relevant studies, publication about certain, um, certain tumor types. And I thought, okay, with that we can work. So we created, we went back to square one, we created a new MEP and we started, not sure if you oncologists here, we started with non-small cell lung cancer, where, where we got four, um, huh? ah. so we, got, we, we contacted four, four oncologists in the area three, in the area of non-small cell lung cancers, we contacted them. They went to ESMO and ASCO, the big conferences. They curated, they, they collected practice-relevant studies, put them into our system. Our medical writers, they wrote study summaries out of it. We wrote an uh, abstract of three pages. We made a nice design. And then we went live with the first indication and made these publications available to other oncologists around the world. And that worked. That really worked. Of course, we had to market the whole thing as well. We started in Switzerland, but now we have, we have uh, oncologists around the whole world using this. And from there, we went to small cell lung cancer. And now I'm a little bit showing off, and I'm proud that Professor Solos Peters, she's one of the, the, the number one oncologists in Europe. She's working for us, supplying uh, studies for small cell lung cancer. Then we continued with, ah, here you go, that's her. And then we continued with mesothelioma, uh, multiple myeloma, now we're doing prostate and a uh, few other indications, uh, breast. At the moment we're also working on breast cancer. And for every, this is the oncology compass, and for every uh, carcinoma, for every indication, of course, there are different leading oncologists who are supporting us. So me as a small agency, you know, I have 20 oncologists on the contract. And this is really cool because we can always ask them what they need, what, what else do they need. And they will always help. And, but they exactly, when they exactly said the same thing all the time. We don't have time. When, when we interview them once a year, or maybe twice a year, we get maybe half an hour with them. And uh, yeah, I know you're familiar with them. In that half an hour, they eat, they do phone calls, they do all sorts of things, you know, which we would never <laughs> think that they could do. But they, they, they just don't have time. And now we are having seven indications at the moment on the platform, more than 600 and this is important, practice relevant and practice changing studies. We are not PubMed, we really have only what's new and important at the moment on the platform. Now I forgot why I said all this, because you mentioned that this is one, uh, one innovative way to connect with the platform, uh, with the HCPs. And of course if you go on uh, the main website, in o if you scroll down a bit, further down, further down, of course, we talk about all the conferences, but we let the oncologists talk. So, we, no, no, go up again. No, no, up, 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 stop. So here, you don't need to click. But we have multiple movies on this platform where we, where we go and interview the oncologists, how they're using this platform, why they're using it. And, at the, and this is really also a, 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 good, a good touch point. We are creating what we call, uh, I have it here somewhere, uh, uh, Oncology Compass Digest. Every quarter, we come up with, a, with an Oncology Compass Digest, which is a, a, it's, um, like a six to 15 page study on what's going on in, in this market in oncology. And we interview physicians around the whole world about this, this, this digest. You know, and if, if you look, this is, this is pure knowledge, where you, where what they get in here. And of course, the user base, the oncologists, they love this. There's no marketing information, this is really what's happening in the oncology area around the world. So, well, if you ever need a, a platform like this,
please approach me. <laughs> Any questions? Please? So we've seen the uh, VR application, basically it's eating your own dog food, uh, creating a non-general solution for the pharma and you're also using it to promote yourself. Mm -hmm. Is there any other maybe solution that you created and you're using it for, for your agency? Oh yes, very much so. So this Grevo platform, we developed and I've done my PhD, uh, my university told me to, for my research, to use SurveyMonkey and some weird solutions that I looked at them and I, I'm a design person, they didn't like them. Then I went to other solutions and I ended up with Qualtrics. It's a huge company and it was expensive. But then I started my own company and I was surveying always the customers to find out what you as a customer really want from our, a farm age, uh, from our agency. And then I looked at all the platforms in the market, nothing really worked. Since I employ about 25 developers and 25 designers, I said, okay, I built my own. And to build my own feedback platform was simple. This is, you probably could show Skyvo, the website. Uh, I asked, as the, the, the briefing to our dev team and design team was simple. I said, I, was, I want the most sexy platform on the planet and the most function-rich pl function platform that people can actually use. Sexy because I'm, I'm, a lo I'm a wine lover and I love also champagne, but most people don't have much of an idea about wine. They go, they buy a bottle because of the label, which is nice. That's fine. So, and also I said, okay, our, our platform must be so nice that the users, the HGPs, the, the patients, the, the, your, the pharma marketers, they love to work with our platform. And that's what we achieved. So we're using our, we use using Scrivo within the pharma companies. The pharma companies, they buy Scrivo, they license it, use our templates to survey the HCPs and the patients. And of course, we also sell this to other industries. So that next to VR, that's another platform. Any other questions? I, I'll pick one. So. Okay. No, I won't be that, ma that mean. All right. Then if you don't have questions, thanks a lot for being here. It was very nice. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>